It is the touchline here on Y254. You're just joining us. I'm Robert Osoro. I've got Ngarwa Kamuya here, who is the legal counsel for Kenya Harlequins Rugby Football Club. And now joining us for the first time is Wanjoy Gitia, who is the CEO of Peak Focus. And these two gentlemen are coming up, have already come up with a sports marketing and consultancy company that is supposed to take Kenya sports to the future. Have I put that right, Wanjoy? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, very well put. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, as Ngash has said multiple times on this platform yeah. and, and really just in general mm -hmm. about the importance of really sports functioning as a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think with what we're doing, uh, I'm most proud of it because, um, you know, we've had the discussions yes. and, you know, we're waiting for, you know, whether it be changes in policy, whether it be changes in, you know, you guys have talked about how big football is in Tanzania, yeah? How big you see football being treated in other nations within Africa. West Africa. West Africa, Maghreb, South Africa. Yes. Exactly, yeah. you know. So what we're saying is, okay, we know that it's going to come to Kenya at some point. Yes. Whether it be with the FKF president or mm -hmm. whether it be policy changes. Mm -hmm. So let's set ourselves up where, because really opportunity is just luck and preparation. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's prepare. Mm -hmm. We've built really solid connections based on yeah. what we do with our media company mm -hmm. covering rugby and, and, and Kenyan sports yeah. or, or, or local sports rather. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with those connections, with, with the athletes, with the coaches, with the businessmen, mm -hmm. let's leverage on that and actually walk the walk, not yeah. just talk the talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Narwa? Yeah. You have been an avid sports fan mm -hmm. since the time I met you and all that. Mm -hmm. But now you have decided to put it into action. Yeah. It's talk and talk, mm -hmm. yes, but yeah. now it's action. Mm -hmm. And you started the sports management and consultancy. Yeah. And you called it to 70 degrees. Yeah. Let's start from there. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody went from 180 or 360. But yeah. so, 70 degrees. So the interesting thing is uh, the backstory to it is, uh, of course, Wanjoy and I work on uh, the Three Quarters podcast. Uh, yes. together yeah. and the name three quarters came from a rugby terminology because remember our focus was on rugby yes. or is still on rugby actually and there's a term for the back three in rugby yes. uh -huh. and they're normally referred to as the three quarters uh -huh. and that's when we came up with the name because I mean other other shows mm -hmm. in, in 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 the country were you know something that you could relate directly with sports yeah so when it came to and and from from the jump us guys were about running it like a business yes. it was not for fun mm -hmm. we were in it for business we were in it the main reason for the podcast was to commercialize sports in kenya uh -huh. and to preach the message of commercializing sports in kenya yes. so one of the things that we immediately knew that we had to do was that the podcast had to have its own intellectual property rights that had to be owned by somebody yes and that somebody was a company. Mm -hmm. So we thought about names and one choice sat down and said, look, 270 degrees is three quarters of a circle. Uh -huh. And yes. so came up the name 270 degrees limited. So yes. that's a group company. Mm -hmm. And 270 degrees sports marketing and consultancy is yes. one of the subsidiaries mm -hmm. that is going to be focusing on now sports marketing and consultancy. Yeah. I mean, uh, deal structuring. Uh, we've talked about commercialization a lot, uh, yeah. contract negotiations, mm -hmm. uh, policy changes, if need be. Yes. Uh, um, um, athlete representation, uh, the co corporate, um, what is it, sponsorship sourcing. Yes. That's one arm of it. Mm -hmm. uh, or rather, that's one arm of 270 degrees. Yes. And then, of course, the other arm yeah. is focusing on the media angle mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, when you started the Three Quarters podcast, the eventual goal was to have a fully fledged running local ESPN. Yes. You know, a, a yeah. sports station in Kenya that yes. focuses on sports in Kenya. Yeah. So, um, like he said, yeah. it's coming. Yeah. Uh, we're already seeing it in Tanzania. Yes. Uh, the good thing about Tanzania is uh, the people who drive the economy yeah. are not the traditional businessmen like we see in Kenya. Yes. I won't mention which tribe they come from, but <laughs> the, traditional, <laughs> the traditional businessmen in Kenya yes. only know how it's all about plots. Yes. It's all about uh, building uh, apartments, real estate, real estate like you know. Banking. A, a ban yeah, they yeah. don't. And even the ones who go into banking are very suave, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But they don't think about, they don't think outside the box. Yes. Now, that's a different thing in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the Asian community that's the biggest in, in terms of business. Yes. And you see that's why Yanga and Simba have mm -hmm. been acquired or bought by individuals, yes. wealthy billionaires who've yeah. bought these clubs and are running the operations of these clubs. Yeah. 
Um, I, for, I forget which channel it is, mm -hmm. but they have just announced that the Tanzanian Premier League. Uh, Azam. Yes, no, Azam, Azam, exactly. Azam, 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 Azam yeah, TV. Azam, the yeah. Tanzanian Premier League is going yes. to be the first league in Africa yes. where all the 306 matches are going to be broadcasted live. Yeah. You see, yeah. uh, and by the way, it's not even in sports. Mm -hmm. Even, even in, I know I'm no, I, I know I'm digressing, but even in the music business, yeah. that's why diamond is a big thing in mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they look at it from a business perspective. Yeah, they sink in their money. Yes, knowing that diamond is a talent. Mm -hmm. If I market him rightly, yeah, he can be able to bring me back the money. So what the, the biggest challenge, Wanjoy, is we are young. Yes, going against the old guys sure. who don't want to leave <laughs> this, this uh, stage. They don't want to leave the table at all. They don't want to mentor anybody mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you plan to bridge that gap? Because yeah. for you, you are coming completely business, sure. running this as a business sure. and all that. And you've got these old guys all the time thinking of it as recreation and all that. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. You know, one of the things we always talk about, um, mm -hmm. whether it's culturally or just whatever it is, there's a very short-term mentality yes. that exists, yeah, and we're very aware of that and know that it exists. For us, um, we know this is a long-term plan. Yes. So even those old guards who are here, one, they want to be here forever. Yeah. That's that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also to be to be really honest, mm -hmm. we also understand that you have to bridge those relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, with what you're doing with the three quarters podcast is as much as we're there to watch and analyze the game, mm -hmm. it's also rubbing shoulders with the right people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the people who are actually, you know, making calls as far as investments. Mm -hmm. I just want to piggyback off that. I think Nash made a very interesting point. You know, a lot of times when you think about investing, um, especially private equity, which is going to be really, really key for what you're trying to do. Yes. It's usually in fintech, mm -hmm. and fintech really just being microfinancing or agriculture. Yes. So it's about understanding that as, as the old guard kind of falls off, mm -hmm. we understand that there's a new breed of individuals who are coming in who yes. understand that investments have to go beyond just the microfinancing and, and the agriculture and, and the, the basics mm -hmm. and has to evolve into the sports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for us, we understand that um, it's time. Mm -hmm. We understand that uh, the old guard won't be here forever, but even even as they are here, it's building those bridges. Yeah. And also, I think with our with our with our sports marketing firm, one thing that's going to be a bit unique is mm -hmm. we're also really big on utilizing data. Mm -hmm. Data analytics is yeah. the, one of the fastest growing industries mm -hmm. yes. in the world, mm -hmm. and you, you're seeing it in Kenya. I mean, Kenya is yeah. a tech hub as far as Africa is concerned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, people from West Africa come to Kenya to understand data and, and, and yes. really grow in that sector. Mm -hmm. So. Us utilizing that, mm -hmm. I think, is also what's going to differentiate us a lot because yeah. we're now using technology, mm -hmm. uh, something that I don't think uh, the old guys or the old individuals mm -hmm. or those who've been in power are yeah. fully mm -hmm. understanding of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when it's our time, as we have a long list takes in the next, you know, have a many years, yeah. um, what's going to also be unique to us is our, our use of data because you see it even in the states when you talk about mm -hmm. analytics, mm -hmm. when you think about the job creations in yeah. in, in in that industry. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think those factors yeah. are what's going to really separate us and really put us at a, at a, at a really unique position. Mm -hmm. And then now, uh, let's break it down now for your role as a company and everything mm -hmm. you want to do. And then you talked about policy mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest things in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I usually have it, like even go to our constitution, mm -hmm. look at the lines that sports is accorded, they are mm -hmm. very small. Mm -hmm. It's only the sports act mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. Policy change. These people in government or in parastatals mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. don't want to agree with the new trends and all sure. that. How do you plan to counter that? Um, you see, policy change is all about making it easy for the private investor to get involved. Yes. Government's work is to make an environment for the private person to invest in. And that's where we are coming from. Yes. For example, one of the things we've been talking a lot, uh, talking about a lot is, can you imagine if we're able to pass a policy or cabinet paper that results in a policy change or a legislative change that says that companies that run sporting organizations are going to pay 15% in tax. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, everyone yeah. who has money invests there because they're going to be paying yeah. less taxes. Yes. They're going to be getting maximum uh, withdrawal or maximum dividends yes. because the tax obligations are less. That's the same thing. That, that's what happened in, an ICT, in the ICT sector, yes. like Wanjoy has said. Mm -hmm. The ICT sector grew in Kenya because yeah. of the policies that were put in place for the private investor. Yeah. It's the same thing that happened to the real estate sec sector. Sure. Yeah. It was attractive policies to allow the private investor to get involved. Yeah. And that's what we are trying to do from a policy perspective, yeah. is make it attractive for the person who has money not to go and build flats fast, mm. but to come and invest in Gormahia. Yeah 
and, and, and take shares in Gorma here and run it as a business. Yeah. So that's how we are looking at it. When it comes from an infrastructure perspective, yeah. it's telling government that, look, guys, if you pass this policy, you have all the, co you have all the wealthy individuals, high net worth individuals, yeah. investing in sports and running in these uh, organizations. Yeah. The next thing you have is corporate Kenya is coming to partner with you guys. Yes. Now, I always use a very simple example. You go to England, the government does not own any stadium. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, actually, it's only, no, no, yeah. Hey, Wembley is owned by the FA. FA uh, Twick yeah, Twickenham is owned by the RFU. Yes. The government does not own any yeah, stadium. Own any. Yeah. If you go to the, the States, I think is the best example. Yes. You, um, Atlanta, Mercedes-Benz Benz Arena. Yes. It's Mercedes-Benz. Yeah. Where the Super Bowl was this year, Hard Rock uh, Stadium in, my, in Florida, mm -hmm. Miami. It's Hard Rock that owns it. Yes. Uh, if you go to basketball, the United Center, mm -hmm. Chicago Bulls, yes. is because of United Airlines. Mm -hmm. Was it? Yeah, United Airlines. Yes, yes yeah. United Airlines. The, the, Toyota the Toyota Center for yeah. Houston Rockets. Yeah. So it's it's these these things are built off corporate, the corporate corporate America in America, corporate England in England, yeah. and that's what we want to bring to Kenya. But you have to make it attractive for them to invest. Yes. You make it. You know, as it is right now, there's a very integral part of the laws that guys don't know about, yeah. and that's Section 15.1 of the Income Tax Act, basically allowable deductions. Mm -hmm. And it allows for anyone who sponsors sports, it's an allowable deduction. Yes. Now, it's very simple. The problem is the governance. We've talked about the people yes. who are go governing sports. Yeah. They are not big thinkers. They think about it from a recreational perspective. Yeah. If I was in charge, I'd go sit down with Bamburi. i tell Bamburi, look, put up a stadium here. Yes. It's going to cost you, what, five, 500, 600 million mm -hmm. shillings, yes. 15,000 sitter, not mm -hmm. too much. Yeah. You go to Queens and tell them that. Yeah. We are going to give you naming rights yeah. for the next six, seven years. Mm -hmm. That broken down comes to about 100 million shillings a year. Yes. For all intents and purposes, that's 100 million shillings you have used to sponsor sports per year. Sure. Yes. So that's an allowable deduction. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, you have marketing for the next seven years. It's known as the Bamburi RFUEA grounds. Yes. It's plastered Bamburi exactly. colors. Any coverage, has Any to coverage has to go. If you look at, you know the famous Ellis Park for Invictus? Yes. Where the South Africa, the Rugby World Cup Finals in 95 yes. was? Mm -hmm. Ellis Park has gone to th through two changes now. They sold naming rights to Coca-Cola for a few years. Yeah. So it was called the Coca-Cola Park. Yes. And now it's Emirates. It's called as the Emirates Airlines Arena yes. in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. Soccer City, yeah. that hosted the, the World Cup 2010 final, yes. is actually called the FNB Stadium. Mm. Yes. Yes. First National Bank, you know, the, 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 the South African Big Bank. Yeah. That's how we need to be thinking. Mm -hmm. But the only way corporate Kenya is going to get involved is if the environment is attractive. attractive. And that's where we come in from a policy perspective. Wow. So it's hopefully advising government and telling government, this is what we do to make yeah. it attractive. You increase your tax base because it's a non-existent tax, tax base. Yeah. Can you imagine if Y254 grows or um, 270 degrees media grows yes. and becomes a sports and ESPN, yes. can you imagine the number of people who are going to be hired? Very much, <laughs> a premium, a premium in that you can buy sports at a higher level. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. Kenya, at the moment, it's, it's not that easy. I, I remember Supersport had come in, mm -hmm. yeah. started very well, yeah. was yeah, picking yeah. up and everything was good and all that. Mm -hmm. But the moment the federation came in and said, now we need two teams and all that, mm. these guys, they cut off the contract and said, we are signed for 16 teams. Mm -hmm. There's no way we can add a, other two teams and all that. And they went. Mm -hmm. Since then, major blackout. <laughs> so yeah. it's been a major, major yeah. blackout yeah. until I think we saw Wazito FC owner mm -hmm. Rick Badoa yes. mm -hmm. channeling in, I think, uh, 100,000, uh, 20 million for the basketball league. Yes. And now they are being out there. You are coming in from the media angle. Sure. Sure. Will it work for you guys? Uh, <laughs> in the, because the climate outside here where we sit in, <laughs> yeah. it's a tough climate. It's a, it's a, <laughs> yeah. You know, I think, um, I mean, kind of echoing what Nasha said, yeah. it really is, it starts from the base. Yeah. Or, or from up top, however you want to look at it, yeah? Mm -hmm. there, is a, there is an attitude towards yeah. media yes. um, that transcends beyond just what's happening in sports. Mm -hmm. There's this idea that if you are working in media, it's yeah. either because you couldn't excel in anything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it has to be this cultural, fundamental change about yes. our approach in media. Mm -hmm. um, I think with sports, mm -hmm. it's, it's such a huge gap and it's waiting to be filled. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but I think in addition to our perspective, I think there has to be an understanding that mm -hmm. this is going to take some time and it's going to, and it's, and it has to be a long-term mentality. Mm -hmm. yes. This can be a short-term thing. Yes. And as we're saying off air, as yeah. I personally feel like mm -hmm. there's a very, it's, it's, it, 
it's permeated in the, in, the, in, in the country that everything has to be short term. Yes. So as you try to implement these media things, mm -hmm. the ones who may be the gatekeepers, yeah. it's what can I get in the meanwhile, mm -hmm. in the short term, yes. so I can take what I need and leave. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to change, and I think that is really the fundamental issue that yes. we're having, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So as we continue to grow, as we continue to evolve, yeah. as we continue to see what's happening, and the beautiful thing about Tanzania is mm -hmm. we're actually seeing it right next door. Mm -hmm. yes. You don't have to look to the UK. Uh -huh. You don't have yeah. to go to, you know, you can see actually. They're saying this is not rocket science. Exactly. You can actually do it. Mm -hmm. And we have the, and there's this thing, of course, in East, Af in East Africa about Tanzania and Kenya and Kenya maybe being a bit better. But uh -huh. then Tanzania is, yeah. is showing us, hey, you guys, we're catching up to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And arguably, we've actually passed, passed you. you. Yes. So yes. now that, you know, for the, for the businessman, for the politician, for, for those who are, um, responsible creating policy as we try to, mm -hmm. you know, um, plead our case, mm -hmm. we have a direct neighbor. So I do think it's possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I do think what's happening uh, locally in East Africa is a mm -hmm. blessing because it's showing that it's possible. Mm -hmm. It's just going to take some time. So it's now, take some talking time. about time, mm -hmm. Nara is, are you guys being over ambitious, too ambitious, <laughs> but starting, let's say, small. Mm -hmm. say we, we start, I think, I read about uh, the college basketball, yeah. uh, the NCAA in mm -hmm. the States, mm -hmm. and uh, they started grooming their players from way back in high school mm -hmm. through college, mm -hmm. and now when they grow up to be culture icons and all that, mm -hmm. people have actually followed them. Yeah. Now, for us here, we have that gap yeah. where you hear someone was in Maseno, mm -hmm. was in school and mm -hmm. all that, Strathmore, finishes high school, mm -hmm. that bridging now to the professional side mm -hmm. becomes a problem, guys disappear and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. Is that where you are coming in from now? You see, uh, and thank you for bringing that example, mm -hmm. yeah. you see the biggest thing that people do not talk about mm -hmm. is that the reason why you know, the, NC, the basketball in the States, the college basketball is big, yes. or college football is big, yes. is because there's an attraction at the end of the line. When uh -huh. I finish college, there's yeah. a particular, of, there's a chance of me going to the NBA. Yes. Right? Yeah. When I finish college, there's a chance of me going to the NFL uh -huh. and earning a living out of it. A higher chance. There's a very high a chance, chance of me going there. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's not that. Yes. This guy, we've just been watching Last Dance, mm -hmm. the Michael Jordan mm -hmm. documentary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His trainer, Tim yeah. Grover. Mm -hmm. Tim Grover had just finished his master's at the University of Illinois mm -hmm. in sports science. Yeah. He was, an, he was an, actually a basketball player. Mm -hmm. yes. He knew his career was ending at the end of college. Sure. Mm -hmm. But immediately he got plugged into the Chicago Bulls sure. yes. and worked with Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. So there's an attraction. There's something at the end of the game, at, yeah. at, the, end of the, uh, at the end of the line, for lack of a better word. Yeah. Now that's a problem in Kenya. Mm -hmm. You are in high school, yeah. you like playing rugby, you like playing football, you like playing basketball. Mm -hmm. But after you finish high school, what's next? What's next? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. go play even, 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 even for the guys who play for the um, for the university teams. Yeah. Between nineteen and twenty-two, mm. there's nothing much you're doing. Mm. You have all the time to play this sport. Yeah. But when you finish your degree, now you have to go work. Yeah. You have yeah. To go Am work. I still going to continue playing rugby? Yet they're not paying me. Mm. Cooperative bank is offering me fifty thousand more mm. per yes. month. Mm. It's it's a no-brainer. Yeah. I'm I'm going to I'm not going to continue playing for allowance for a thousand bob a week. Mm -hmm. Hell no. I'm going yeah. to go to cooperative bank. Yeah. That's what now we are trying to change. Sure. Yeah. We are trying to make it an option uh -huh. that, okay, fine, I have a business degree, yeah. but I'm also good in sports. Mm. And I can earn money through sports. Yes. Exactly. Let me pursue this line. Exactly. We're trying to make it an option. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. And then, Andre, now another one, uh, big one there has got to be talent management. Mm -hmm. Yes. Usually a big one. Uh, uh, I've interacted with a few sports agents yes. in this town. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I can tell you it's... Uh, it's like a war yeah. <laughs> dealing with Kenyan sportsmen. Mm -hmm. yeah, even uh, telling them we need to represent you, this is what we can do for mm -hmm. you and all that. Most of them don't understand it, others understand it. Mm -hmm. I think the welfare associations have really helped them a lot. Now they have got that understanding yes. of mm -hmm. what is happening and all that. Talent management, how key is it for your company? Oh, it's, it's, it's everything um, mm -hmm. because of course without talent, there, yeah. there really is no farm, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, to piggyback off what he said, yeah. you know, one of the things that from a young age of being taught, yeah. um, and, and, and a bit of a thing about sports, it creates these avenues where you can have merchandising companies, mm -hmm. you can have media companies, mm -hmm. you can yes. have data companies. Mm -hmm. So you look at, for example, when we look at the States, yeah. uh, you look at Nike, for example, Nike, uh -huh. Nike comes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You find from a very young age, mm -hmm. you have these kids who are going to come for an entire summer. Uh -huh. They go there yeah. for... Uh, for what, three to four months, mm -hmm. yeah. and they get to actually train with some of the best, whether it's in, if it's in basketball, yeah. 
one of the best point guards who either played in from a college level who yeah. make it to the NBA yeah. or even NBA guys who come and so from a young age you have these these camps that are that, that exist where uh, talent is being nurtured at a very very young age yes mm -hmm. so I think for us um, it becomes a bit difficult when you are dealing with someone who starts playing rugby at 16 uh, yes. at 16 I mean you're already what six seven years behind yeah. yes so as we continue to grow sports in the country and be mm -hmm. able to have these opportunities so we can create camps and create these um, whether it be for summer, whether it be for a few weeks, mm -hmm. yes. um, start at a very young age. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens in football yeah. in, in England. You know, you have those yeah. camps that start very young. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's understanding, like I said, mm -hmm. this is not something that we know we'll pick up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yes. We know it will take time. Mm -hmm. And this is part of our growth strategy, mm -hmm. yeah. is how do we take the young people uh -huh. and mm -hmm. creating the investment opportunities for, for the private sector mm -hmm. yeah. to where we're able to see such things being implemented. So yeah. by the time they're coming into sports, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be in high school or post high school, yeah. They've already been exposed to mm -hmm. what it takes from a very, very young age. Mm -hmm. So their bodies have developed. Yeah. There is their understanding of marketing, mm -hmm. understanding of business. Mm -hmm. um, and so for us, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And even for those who don't go into playing the actual sports, mm -hmm. yes. there are opportunities to do other things. Mm -hmm. There are opportunities for them to be coaches, mm -hmm. yeah. opportunities for them to be analysts, mm -hmm. opportunities for them to be... That is actually one of the main things because everybody usually looks at mm -hmm. front camera. Yes. A anybody out there when he looks at us, he thinks that we are the only ones working here. Yeah. Yeah. We are people. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know they're against <laughs> they're, they're yeah. very people yeah. sure. behind the scene. Sure, sure. Uh, th that has got to be a big challenge. Yeah, it, it is. Um, but I mean, as we said, um, ev everything is, is, it just has to take time. Yes. You mm -hmm. know? Um, even as you look at this particular, I mean, me being in the, in the, in the media space, I can yeah. tell you, it's not just what's mm. happening. What yes. is happening. Yeah, yeah. Is that. Uh -huh. Last Dance is the perfect example. Yes. yes. If okay. you look to the credits of that documentary, yeah. the amount of positions that have been created as far as jobs, mm -hmm. from executive producer to director yes. to the gaffers, mm -hmm. I mean, you create so much opportunity yeah. in a totally different sector, mm -hmm. but still relating to sports. Sports, yes. yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah. I mean, we know the opportunities are there, the talent is there. Mm -hmm. There's, I don't think there's been an, a coach or someone who's come from outside of Kenya, mm -hmm. yeah. whether it be America or, or Europe mm -hmm. or, or New Zealand, yeah. and they always talk about how pure the talent is in yes, Kenya, okay. mm -hmm. how yeah. great the individuals mm -hmm. are here mm -hmm. in Kenya as far as yeah. naturally. Mm -hmm. So imagine if we're able to now channel that to actual opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. It's going to be, an, and, and, and to, I mean, on the issue of agents, uh, yes. just a, 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 a perfect case of sports agency and, and, and athlete representation yes. is, again, I think it's the easiest thing to refer to is the last dance. Mm, uh, yes. They talked about Jordan's agent, yeah. David uh -huh. Fuck, yes. and how he he was the one who pushed Jordan to go and sign with Nike. Mm. And yeah. they had hoped to make $3 million in four years, yes. and Nike made $126 million in the first in the year. First year. Uh -huh. Arguably, wow. we can say that Nike is Nike because of Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. But the yeah. truth and the fact of the matter is Michael Jordan would never have gone to Nike yes. had he not partnered with David Fuck. Yes. Yeah. So it's also the understanding uh -huh. from a corporate perspective mm -hmm. and understanding and seeing these are the things that I think you should associate with. Yes. Seeking for endorsements mm -hmm. for these players. We yes. just talked about it, about Elliot Kipchoge being the only person who's really being embraced by corporate care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you see, we don't even have to have the big corporates. We just have the small SMEs. Mm -hmm. yeah. you yes. know, if, uh -huh. if they yeah. give somebody two million shillings a year, exactly. that's money in Kenya. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, we just, we're thinking of it from a business perspective. It's yeah. purely from business. Yeah. Um, we need to make it an ecosystem in Kenya. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like he has said, yeah. you look at that 10 part documentary mm -hmm. and think about the jobs it created, yeah. yet it was focusing on one team. Yes. One team. The Chicago so, Bulls. Yes, mm -hmm. one team mm -hmm. created all that buzz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how many documentaries? Can you imagine? You know, you go to, the, you go to YouTube and look at this. Uh, crappy videos, I'm sorry I said yes. that, but they're very crappy videos about basketball mm -hmm. or football. Uh, and you see the guy has like 400,000 yeah. views. Yes. Yeah. And you're asking yourself, how does this guy have 400,000 views? Mm. But it's because sports is a business. Yeah. Yes. It's a genuine yeah, it interest. It has to sell. Yeah, exactly. it has to sell. If you're just joining as it is Y254, it is the touchline. I'm Robert Osoro. When Joy Gitia coming here for the first time is the founder and CEO of Peak Focus Visuals here in town and in Kenya. And we are also Narwa Kamoya, who is the legal counsel for Kenya Harlequins and also an avid sports fan who has now turned his passion into serious <laughs> business, serious business. Now, 
one thing that you have put here, I know you talked about it and I did not put it because I wanted to come at a, a, just a topic of its own, mm -hmm. has got to be data analytics and technology. Yes. Because we are one country where technology is big, yes. people mm -hmm. have embraced it, mm -hmm. but the sports industry itself <laughs> yeah. has not embraced technology. Yes. How is that big for you? Yeah, I mean, um, first, first when we talk about data analytics, it, yeah. it sounds like this huge convoluted thing, mm -hmm. and it's really not. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the word scares people. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> analytics, analytics. I mean, yeah. when, you, when, you, when you're watching, um, when you're watching a sports game, for example, I was, yeah. I was watching the, uh, the, the highlights of the, um, the Milwaukee game, the Bucks. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes. And, and they tell you things such as, you know, the, the team that has lost the first two games in each series mm -hmm. has never won a championship. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Just very interesting data mm -hmm. yes. that uh -huh. you're just collecting by looking at historical performance. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. imagine you have someone who actually, that's, that's what they do. Yeah. It's a bit more, you, you talk about on, on, on the field performance. Yes. Yeah. But when you start being able to draw up such information and be able to provide such data, um, mm -hmm. Those are things that we think is going to be key for us. Mm -hmm. Now, for us, from a sports marketing firm, uh, mm -hmm. our data analytics will probably be more on, not probably, will be more on the field. Mm -hmm. yes. Being able to understand a player's performance and being able to actually measure it. Uh -huh. there's, so, there's so much happening in technology where yes. you can tell, you know, this particular player. And I'll use basketball as a great example, actually. Yes. I, can t I can look at a basketball player and look at their historical performance on the field and say, mm -hmm. when, they, when they shoot on the wing, in the mm -hmm. third quarter, mm -hmm. at yes. this point in time, mm -hmm. they are weak. Yes, uh -huh. they're, they're, yes. Like, they're overly fatigued, mm -hmm. or depending on the type of uh, scheme you're running, mm -hmm. I know when they're going to be most effective or yes. least effective. Mm -hmm. And that's literally just being able to look at percentages, being able yes. to look at the way they're playing mm -hmm. the game, mm -hmm. and forming um, the, uh, the, your, your, your gameplay around that. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think the Rockets have been really the pioneers and yeah. have been really big. I, I usually also, wh when you look at uh, state sports, mm. it's one industry that is pushed more by numbers. Mm. Performance sure. is numbers. You look mm. at baseball, you look at football, mm. sure. basketball, it's more, b even getting to the draft, yeah. Yeah. it's all about, it's all about numbers. Yeah. So that is the major thing you are trying to push into people now. Exactly. Yeah. We, we want that to, want to, you know, have that be part of what you are doing and, and let people understand that also it's, as much as sports is about the passion and, mm -hmm. and, and, and caring about it, yeah. this, there's a, a very uh, mathematical aspect to it as well. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that's what we, you know, yeah. we're going to be using with, yeah. with our talent and, and even being able to understand you know, what's going to bring the best out of them yeah. um, as we manage and consult. And actually not, yes. not only even in American sports, it's mm -hmm. now trickled down to the predominantly English sports. Sure. You yes. know, like yes. for example, uh -huh. in rugby, we were yeah. talking about it and, and how data analytics is able to break down a forward's performance. Mm -hmm. yes. And yeah. you will see that the forward has run 10 kilometers in a game, mm. yeah. but he's done 20%. Mm. Yes. So then you're able to tell this forward, okay, you're running too much. Yeah. Uh -huh. You yes. know, the rack is going to form here, here, mm. here, and here. Uh -huh. Just be here. Yeah. So you bring down the guys, he's able to conserve his energy. Yeah. You bring down his running to six kilometers per mm -hmm. game, mm -hmm. yes. but his efficiency shoots, his, Goes up beyond shoots 20. to, yeah, yeah. Beyond 20 to yeah. actually 90%. Sure. So analytics is everywhere. It's mm -hmm. football, the same thing. Yeah. You know, you're told, okay, fine, in the last half of, in the last half of the second half, mm -hmm. this guy tends to, you know, he he's uh, he t he carves his shot more because yes. he's weak. You know, he's tired. Yeah, that all that comes into play. Mm -hmm. So eventually, we'll have to get to it. And and technology, as like he's mentioned, I was reading yeah. something this week that, yeah. of course, you would expect that revenues would drop this year mm. Uh, mm. in 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 leagues. Yes, but it hasn't because yeah, uh, yeah. the share price has gone up for many of those mm. NBA teams yes. because of the technology aspect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because these games are able to be televised yeah. because, I don't know, 300 people are tuning in virtually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. because the adv advertising has gone to an, the next level mm -hmm. yes. because, you know, there are no fans. Mm -hmm. So technology is important. Yeah. We can't go. Does. We've just seen the return to play protocols that the Ministry of Sports has developed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even if we go back, Robert, yeah. how will we know who, what happened in the Kenya Cup finals? We don't have broadcasting. We don't have, sure. yes. we don't have technology. Sure. Yeah. So, or rather, we are not utilizing technology. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other things we think about from a business perspective is if you look historically um, at the at the at the broadcasting, mm -hmm. the broadcasting angle. Mm -hmm. If you look historically in America, I mean, it's ABC, CBS, NBC sure. that started. Sure. If you look at this in England, it's BBC, mm -hmm. and in Kenya, it should be the mother station, KBC. Yeah. KBC can be built to a level where they are able to generate their own income. Yes. They don't have to wait for money from the government. Mm -hmm. They can buy rights into this yes. sports. Yes. 
and they should be televising the sports right now as you speak. Yes. So it's it's a whole it's a whole um, ecosystem that has a lot of plugins and it's utilized well. Yeah. We are likely to see thousands of jobs created. Finally, yeah. Yes, your end game now. What I was gonna say mm -hmm. actually, you know, our end game is also this, yeah. yeah. You know, we we are, we're referencing countries that are miles ahead mm -hmm. that have developed a talent, very, very and we understand that sometimes when you when you mention these topics, when you mention these countries, it may sound like okay, you're, that's something that Kenya will never achieve. Yeah, that's Ethiopia, by the way, you know, that's unachievable. We don't have to exactly. Yeah. All we are saying is let's take the necessary steps, mm -hmm. and everything else will work itself yeah. out. Yeah, I think as long as we're organized, we plan, we know where we are going, we have the examples, mm -hmm. uh, we know we'll get there. So. Much as maybe we're discussing about countries that may be seemingly far, far ahead, yeah. we're not expecting to get there tomorrow. Yeah. We know it'll take time. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying it's time. It may yeah. sound like it's heavy, mm -hmm. but we'll get there. Well, that's where we come to the end of this interview segment. Hope to have you again, Naro, so that we can discuss more on the new company that they have formed. It's <laughs> called 270 Degrees. It's a sports management and consultancy firm. Yes. Well, Ngaro Kamuya there, the legal counsel, Kenya Harlequins, and also Wanjui Gitia, founder and CEO, Peak Visuals, Peak Focus Visuals. I'm Robert Osoro. Let's take a break with Know Your Sports segment, and this time we are focusing on baseball, which is a big one in the United States. Actually, one of the most expensive players, one of the most paid players in the world is in baseball, called Alex Rodriguez. A big one there. Let's learn how that sport is played. When we come back, we'll be talking with Samuel Mwano and Juguna, and it's all about the transfers, the Lionel Messi saga. It <laughs> seems like it's not the last time you are seeing of this episode. I will be talking about all those transfers, what Manchester United has been doing, as we also do a preview of the UEFA Nations League. <laughs> 